Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm Jessica Waybright, and with me is Mary Sundstrom for being very naughty. Uh, we are delighted to welcome you to Punching Marshmallows. We're going to give everybody a few more minutes to show up. So I'm gonna, I'll put my um, little screen back up there for a minute. But I just wanted to thank you all for being here, and, and we'll get started shortly. All right, everybody. So we have kind of a fun title, as you noticed, which I hope is what brought you to our show. Um, Punching Marshmallows uh, is perfect for this time in our all of our lives. Mary uh, actually came up with the title. Do you want to give us a little bit of uh, background about that? OK. Um, it's sort of like giving into the futility of trying to make plans in this time. Um, we're all in this sort of limbo, and you stick a little finger in one direction, and then something else pops up, and it's just frustrating for all of us that are, at this point in our lives, are used to making decisions and going, acting on them, and um, just that fr frustration that that sort of causes for us all. But it's a pretty colorful term, and you could obviously we had many different interpretations of what it means that's my input <laughs> so i'd like uh we have our other two owners of remark are here as well um lincoln and jessica would you guys introduce yourselves and say hello sure i'll go first i'll jump in um my name is jessica chrishels um or two jessicas so you may have had different uh correspondence with us um and we were sitting around this uh, spring, trying right after things started shutting down for COVID, and we um, always do a photo-based show in the summer, a call for entry. And this year, we were all feeling extremely frustrated that all of our momentum from our all of our plans, we just had to cancel a residency for artists. Um, you know, artists were coming the following week, um, and we'd had to cancel that, and we were just feeling that something we, artists needed an outlet um, and a place to show their work. Um, of course, this whole situation of the pandemic has probably got, we're all sick of it. And we're, it's not ending. And so this, this uh, show is just in the middle of it all, but uh, it's been really neat to see what everyone came up with. And it's also the virtual thing that we're doing has been great because it's giving us a chance to see artists and talk to them more. So that is one really positive upside. We've been enjoying that. And um, you guys can see us and see the actual space. So that's a, that's a good sign. So anyway, thank you so much for coming. And we don't want to talk too much. We want to see the art and let you guys talk. So that's that. I guess, hi, I'm Lincoln. And I'm the, the fourth, the fourth owner. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think Mary and Jessica have, have, have said it pretty well. I mean, we were definitely interested in the in the artwork that came in and it's 
obviously this moment is, is kind of stirring a lot of a lot of feelings in people and and, and it's coming out in the artwork but so it, it's I, th I think it's an interesting little collection of, of prints and, and we're always interested in exploring the boundary between photography and printmaking i, I myself am a, a photographer and i do photopolymer prints uh, from, from my, my uh, photos so it's like I, i'm always really interested to see how other people are kind of taking the basic elements and, and doing something that's you know very different from what I I would imagine. So it's one of the benefits we have of seeing people's work from all over the, the country, really. So, um, yeah. So Jessica, did did you want me to start showing the pieces or? Let's uh, let's look at the slideshow first. Okay. Okay. So I have a slideshow and. If you are an artist in the show and you see your piece come up on the screen, please feel free to unmute yourself and say hello. Hello. My name is Sadie, and this is one of my pieces that got into the show. I was really thrilled to be a part. Can y'all hear me? Yeah? So anyway, um, I, uh, I, I studied photography, and when I was living in New York City, and I had been taking classes at the Art League, and I was working on a series called Illusions of the Eye, and so all of my plans were ba basically trash. So what I did at the beginning uh, is I started reviewing my test print and also the idea of working uh, in a more authentic way because um, I, I have a tendency to be very perfectionistic. And I thought that it's really more about the making of the art and embedding Kind of meaning into what is happening in my life. So this was the first piece that I did and I really didn't like it because I was having trouble with the polymer plate hitting the um, the transparency and it gave me all these dots as you can see they're everywhere and and then when I looked at it I, I, I trashed it I put test print do again on the back and I raced it off after I finished it. But I thought, wow, when I go outside, I feel like that there are all these little viruses around. So I, I kind of connected to the fear of something invisible, but in this piece, I made it visible. So, cool. I messed up, you guys. Give me a second. Okay. I'll be back. Oh, did I lose the whole thing? Thank you guys for being here because it's, uh, you know, we all get Zoom fatigue. Uh, so it's yeah, nice to yeah. see you all here. Thank you. Are there actually people coming in tonight to see the work or, I mean, would there be people to show up or is it? Can she hear us? Yeah. yeah. People, there's no one here, but at the owners. Um, oh, wow. The shop is open, but um, we have presented to our Albuquerque public, you know, that we're open Fridays and Saturdays now to the public, but for the most part, people have stayed away. Right. Oh, but, just uh, this wonderful 
uh, Zoom application has afforded people to chime in whenever they want to. So it's kind of fun. Yeah, that's great. Um, thank you. It's just small technical difficulties, it's okay. <laughs> Sadie, were we on your second piece? No, just the first one. With okay. uh, the second piece is rather different, um, but that's okay. Um, th this was the second piece, and the second piece kind of has a very different psychological uh, twist. It's more... It's not about being fearful or angry or uh, upset. It, it's more about a meditative state of accepting what is appearing before you. And in this piece, um, I, I, I just took a more meditative uh, response to my test print and I did um, I applied watercolor and I, I used it as drawing with very fine lines. So, so for me, this was a very different kind of uh, perception of how I would relate to my emotions as they would appear. And uh, I found that at, particularly at the beginning, there was a lot of ups and downs and I saw it manifest in my work. And Sadie is going to do a formal artist talk about this work uh, with us on July 17th, same time, same Zoom link. So please join us for that. Yeah, please do. I look forward to doing it. All right, Meredith, are you with us? Now all of a sudden lost my control of everything. Okay. Briar? So. Nancy? Oh, oh, wait. Okay. There's Nicholas. Dee Dee, you're here. Do you want to say anything? Yeah, yeah, thank you. I'm just delighted to be a part of this because I'm neither a printmaker nor a photographer except with my iPhone. So um, at the beginning of the pandemic, um, I was, well, as an artist, I have been working with um, cyanotype for several years, but I usually make my own cyanotype media and uh, use it in a variety of ways. But during the sort of the early phases of the lockdowns um, time, I wasn't going to my studio and I happened to have these cloth, these pre-treated cloth, uh, cotton cloth um, uh, panels. And so I thought, well, and both my husband and I have worked in healthcare ourselves. So we're, we're very, um, you know, just super hyper vigilant about everything. And uh, I had some supplies and stuff, uh, medical supplies, just extra stuff. Uh, he's a physician. I used to work in a laboratory. And um, so I started pulling out all this stuff I had and bottles and uh, looking for things that were sort of missing in, in at the time. Um, and some are still missing now. So I made a series of just here at my home they were a little different if you know the cyanotype so I made a, a couple at a time these handmade things this DIY stuff and I decided I should start maybe adding a sort of as a tribute to all the people that are making masks at home maybe I should just embellish or uh, do a little stitch work which I hadn't done in many years on these on this cloth on these cloth panels and this particular uh, one of the series is just some empty medicine bottles. Um, I know everyone at the beginning was so worried about, and there were so many rumors about if you take this, 
you know, if you take this lozenge, you can prevent it. Or if you take this, you can prevent it and blah, blah, blah. So um, I just pulled out a bunch of medicine, old medicine bottles and, um, and uh, packets. And, and that's what this particular image is of. Um, and, and then I just sort of went over it with some stitching. To tell you the truth, um, it, it wasn't my favorite of the, of the ones I submitted or of the series that I've since um, almost done. I have about 25 panels now, and I'll show some of those in my art talk. That, you know, I, I, I left it sort of crude, um, um, and uh, I, I felt like this is such a, a crude time. I mean, we're just all sort of uncertain about how things are going to happen. I love the imagery of the missing, um, the missing medicines and uh, because we really didn't know what the missing vaccine, you know, the missing everything, everything's missing. <laughs> and so that's kind of, uh, that was sort of the premise for this series of, of work. But I thank you guys for, for taking it. I'm just thrilled. Plus uh, I'm from Texas and I love New Mexico. And I would just, I was just, praying that I could come <laughs> to, to see the, the show myself. Um, and my son lives in Santa Fe and works in, New in, in Los Alamos. So I, I've been many times and I hope to, to be there again someday soon. So thank you. You're welcome. We're, we're pleased that you uh, have joined us and uh, we are just delighted to have your piece in the show. And uh, your talk, Didi's talk, is going to be on August 7th. 5 p.m. this Zoom link. So please join us then. Thanks, Dee Dee. Heather, is Heather here? I do not know. No, yes, yes, she is. Thank, Heather, thank you. Oh. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm slow to the draw on the um, microphone. Hi, I'm Heather. Um, and these are my prints. These prints are monotype with um, serigraph. Um, they're actually part of a series. These um, photos were taken over a 12 year period. They um, are about slowing down and looking for signs around us and listening to nature and um, the energy of everything. And um, that's what they're about. Um, these prints were made while um, I was graduating this semester last, um, and it went through a lot of um, extra, extra. Um, they started out as uh, etching um, aqua tint and um, dry point, and then um, I tried to use a photopolymer and um, when I was getting ready to audition, um, they sent us home. So these are um, actually, you know, doing the old um, problem switch direction and I think they turned out amazing um, for the circumstance and um, I feel like these colors are a direct response to the alarm I was feeling. Um, so, yeah, I'm immunocompromised and I've been uh, terrified. So, that's what these are about. Um, does anyone have any questions for me? The colors really... <laughs> <laughs> really speak to the fear. Yes. <laughs> Everybody's on edge. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, these images are really um in in life. We'll 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 show the whole uh show a little bit in a minute so you can see it hung, but in real life they're, they're really vibrant. Um and uh, it's interesting to hear you talk about the the fear, but it's really lovely. Uh, as well. It's also beautiful and meditative and intense. So really cool. Well, I really appreciate you including me in your show. Um, my specialty was printmaking, but um, photography is a huge um, 
it's huge for me. I've always taken pictures and all my work is, um, even my paintings are photo based. So it was amazing to see that I could have some, a show that's focused on combining these methods. And thank you. Thank you so much. And Heather will also be giving a talk on July 17th, so please join us for that. Thanks. Claudia, are you with us today? You are. Do you want to speak? I am here. Yes, sure. Um, first, let me say it's really an honor to have you pick three pieces. Um, they kind of all feel like they go together, and um, I really appreciate that. Um, I've been doing cyanotypes for about six years. I'm an encaustic painter, and so I had the idea of using uh, the method of cyanotypes to print my own backgrounds for my paintings, which I've been doing for quite a long time. And then um, I signed up to do a 100-day project through Instagram, and these are three of my hundred, almost hundred. I have five more to go. And then I'll have a hundred prints. To say that is funny because I probably have more like 400. As you know, if you do cyanotypes, they don't always turn out the way you think they will. Or, um, you know, just 10 minutes of weather can change everything. So I'm in Portland, Oregon. And uh, consistency is one thing we don't always have in weather. So... Uh, sun comes and goes very quickly. <laughs> anyway, um, so when I saw the title Punching Marshmallows, I thought, oh, I bet I have some pieces that would fit that. And I had done a whole long series of dandelion pieces. Um, and so, yeah, I, you know, I thought dandelions, the seed heads, marshmallows, the softness, um, and I felt like these three pieces spoke to the virus also. I mean, the seed heads kind of have that feeling a little bit, but they also there was the, the feeling of, you know, um, letting the dandelions go and just start draping and falling over time. And so um, this one is called Giving Up. Uh, it's printed from a positive film. Versus, I usually use negatives, but um, the dandelions, you know, fit the positive film. So, any questions, sir? It's nice to have the sequence. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So one of them is on a darker uh, paper. Did we see that one already, Jessica? Yeah. One of them. We'll go back. One? No. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So how is that a different... Um... This is a cyanotype also. This was from a negative that was then soaked in tea. Oh, okay. And it was... Um, the darker the blue is, the darker the print will become because the uh, tea will attach itself to the darkest blues. Cool. And yeah, these are all on an iridescent um, archival paper. So cool. they actually have a nice little sheen to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're beautiful. And as a series, it sort of seems to me, you know, I like to personify, or what is it, anthropomorph, what is it, anthropomorphize? Uh, so to me, the dandelions, besides sort of looking like marshmallows, they really seem to be having different reactions to the circumstances. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, and different parts, different stages of their reaction. So, yeah, that's why we like them as a little series. So, so, so was the print, was the print soaked in tea or the? Or the, the print was print? soaked in tea. Oh, okay. So, and then do you use a, a film transparency or are you doing, generating it from a computer or? Um, I actually take pictures with my iPad and then print them out. Um, on the printer on transparency film and then print from the film. Okay. I also right. do direct prints, but um, I have done some direct prints of dandelions in the series, the 100 day series. Um, 
but I just light them with a flashlight. <laughs> Very low tech. <laughs> so, I do mix my well, own solutions. So. Well, it works. They, yeah, they work well. Yeah. Thank you. You're beautiful. So, um, so do you do the cyanotype first, and then uh, once that it's cyanotype, then you put it in a tea solution? Yes, once I wash out, you know, I print the cyanotype, wash out the solution, it turns blue, um, and then I put it into the tea. Then you put it. Um, how about timing? Do you have to do tests for how long and the type of tea? Because there's so many different types of teas. There's like black tea, there's chemical I use tea. really cheap black tea because you, you need about tea. 20 to 30 bags in mm -hmm. order to um, get the solution dark enough. They are so rich. They look very rich even on a screen. Yeah, they're nice. Thank you. All right, thank you, Claudia. Claudia is going to give us an artist talk on August 14th here at 5 p.m. Please join us. Claudia, may I ask how big these are? What? How big are these prints of yours? They're eight by 10. Thank you. Well, 10 by eight, most of them, yeah. Karen, are you here with us? Fruma, you're here, right? Did I say your name right? Maybe. Do you want to speak? Yes, I'm here. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm on my phone and it's a little hard for me to control everything, you know, with the uh, with the phone. But yes, of course, I'd love to speak. Uh, thank you for including me. Um, like the, the person from Oregon, I'm kind of far away. Um, and uh, I'm a newcomer to cyanotype. Um, of course, I studied it when I was in art school, but um, I came to it uh, last summer when uh, a class that I was teaching um, of women that were in crisis uh, through a fund in my town. Uh, the, the man that disperses the funds decided to give everyone that was in the program um, a lovely barbecue treat at his home on the beach up here in Connecticut. And so uh, the teachers in the program were asked to think about some kind of activity some kind of artistic activity that could be done at the beach. And since I'm not uh, a painter um, and these women, well, they had photos with their phones and we had been using that throughout the course, I really wanted to do something different. I kind of said to myself, gee, wouldn't it be neat if we did sun prints on the beach? Cause it's like the perfect place, lots of sun. And so we did that and they loved it. I ordered pre-prepared um, pre materials uh, online, uh, amongst them some giant uh, mural-sized pieces of cotton that were soaked in the cyanotype chemicals. And I had them all laid down on that. And we made some really lovely group prints and everybody made their own prints and it was a very successful day. Um, so later on in the summer, I decided that I would like to try it for myself. And I was bitten, you know, I was just smitten by the whole thing because uh, having been a photographer since the age of seven, I've used a lot of machines and I got tired of using machines. Uh, this was something, you know, that I could, apply my hands to. I really felt the need to get dirty and to do things with materials rather than a photo. And of course, you know, having been working digitally since about 1993 or whenever it was that I got my first digital camera and not working with chemicals since then, um, nothing was handmade. 
So let's skip over to uh, Corona. And um, here it is, February, March. And um, I'm really not one to go and, uh, I don't know, document things that are, you know, empty streets and people and how they're suffering. And I haven't turned the camera on myself since I was in my 20s, since I don't think there's much to see there, but who knows. And I kind of realized that I needed some kind of therapy and the therapy that I needed was to take walks. And lucky for me, I feel very privileged. I live in a suburban community about an hour north of New York City. And it's not even suburban. It's more what they call exurbia. So it's not exactly rural, but everybody has at least two acres of land around their home. And so, and there's a lot of trails and natural places to go. So what I decided to do was to return to, you know, the, the cyanotype and, you know, see what came of it. And the truth is that as I started working with this medium again, I liked what happened as the paper turned color and interacted with the plant materials, uh, the botanicals that I was putting on there. And also I've been exploring what they call wet cyanotype, which means that you don't wait for the chemical to dry on your paper or on your cloth, but you actually use it while it's still wet. And I add soap suds and I add um, turmeric powder and paprika, and sometimes I even add dry pigments, uh, or I wrap it in saran wrap. There's all kinds of interesting things that one can do to the cyanotypes to bring out a lot of texture. And the last thing is, I realized that because I loved the way things looked before I washed them in water, which is the way that one develops a cyanotype, merely just wash it in water and it dries, um, I wanted to preserve the amazing colors that appeared when I took everything off and the paper was laid bare. So what you're seeing here in this image is a detail from a larger cyanotype. And I often photograph details that speak to me. And this happened to be a bunch of eucalyptus leaves that I laid out and it's a much bigger composition. But this had these wonderful blues and greens and uh, what you see here with the texture. And I captured that with a digital camera. So this is actually a digital print on um, archival paper. It's not the uh, original cyanotype. And what has happened over the period of the last four months and the kinds of names that I've given to these works even though they're beautiful and they capture uh, this wonderful spring we've been having. And by the way, because people aren't driving as much and not expending so much carbon, uh, people up here have been remarking, A, that their hydrangeas are having a banner year. And we're also seeing a lot of bear moms and their bear cubs come out of hiding a lot more animals and people's gardens are just flowering amazingly. Um, and so that gives me a lot of material for the cyanotypes that I'm making with, uh, mostly I, I use wildflowers and things that are native to Connecticut. But what I've noticed over the period of time that I've been working with this and the names that I'm giving, they all have something to do with the corona. So like the name of this one is in isolation and the, the full name is floating in isolation because it looks like um, looks like a body of something natural that's floating underwater, uh, but it's by itself. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> yeah. 
Thank you, Fruma. Uh, is that how you pronounce your name? Is that correct? Yes, yes, yes Fruma. Excellent. Fruma will yes. be giving us an artist talk on August 28th. Please join us then. It's beautiful. Yes. Thank you. Are you with us? It's, this piece is really cool. You guys, you'll see it when Lincoln gives a little tour because it lights up from behind. It's really neat. Wow. Oh. Gail, did you want to say hello? Gail Morrison? No, nope, we'll come back to you if you do. Oh. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay, Jonathan, you're here. Do you want to speak to us? <clears throat> oh, all right, if you change your mind later, let us know. Uh, Michelle, are you here today? Hi, I am here under my husband's Zoom account. That's why you see uh. Zoom, not Michelle. Um, I could relate to what Fruma was saying. I have been a photographer. My art's been based in photography um, really my adult life. I had hoped to becoming a painter at one point, um, got sidetracked by printing, um, screen printing in Italio, and then found my way back to photography. But I've always missed the hand working that has disappeared once you start working digitally. There's no darkroom work anymore. There's really a lot of the mystery has disappeared from me. So what I started doing at the beginning of the coronavirus is, um, like many people, cleaning out my stash of um, stuff in the basement. And I say the word stuff kind of kindly. Um, and in my, my stash of things in the basement, I started looking through old prints that I had made, digital prints on archival paper. And being a pack rat, I just could never bear to throw them away, but they weren't really anything that I thought was that interesting or that I was going to do anything with. But then I, um, I just, I started sanding these old prints and it was a really interesting process because um, I got to experience the medium in a very different way and very hands-on. Um, and also I got to really understand the way the ink gets laid down on the substrate in the digital printing process, which is something that, I really just took for granted, never really understood. So it was amazing to me how deep these inks went into the paper. And I could sand and sand and sand and sand, and they stubbornly refused to go away. Um, and then after the sanding, I would run them through the printer again with another image on top, and then I would re-sand. And then some of these in this series have three or four prints that have been sanded in between times and run back through the printer. Um, and I really thought of this um, as a metaphor for what was kind of happening every day. We get up, we do the same thing. We don't have that many distractions and we reprint our life on top of the day before, especially now with the coronavirus when we don't have as many opportunities to go and do and be with other people. We're kind of pulled into ourselves and we just kind of keep reworking what we have ourselves. So that's really where this project stemmed from. And right now, I probably have about 30 images that have gone through this process. And I really like the process for the handworking aspect of it. And also the mystery. The uncertainty. I really can't predict what I'm going to get. And that's sometimes very disappointing and sometimes really exciting. And it reminds me of the old darkroom days when you would... Oh, looks like we have lost Michelle. Oh. Let's go on Michelle. to Sarah. Are you here, Sarah? Oh. Okay, Sarah. Um, Nicole? I don't know if you're here. And Paula, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Hi there. Hi. How are you? I'm um, good. How are you? Tell us good. about your wonderful piece. Okay, so I start with a 
a photo and screen print that. And then I do cold wax with oil. And um, there's a lot of passing through the screen to get a relief to pick up the oil in the cold wax. And um, this image is a very lonely image and it, I did it for this um, show. I, um, there are three things that I responded to. First of all, my son owns a restaurant and he closed immediately when COVID came around. And so I, I entered three pieces and they all had to do with restaurants and honoring the restaurant business. The other was missing out on having coffee with my friends. <laughs> and the other was um, the bird. Um, the bird symbolizes my mother who, when she was dying, the last word she told me was that she would be a bird and watch over me. And during COVID, I have been thinking a lot about her. So I'm having coffee with my mother in this. And it's hard to see in this image, but there's a reflection of the bird in the coffee. And um, that's my mother and I having coffee together and conversing. So this process takes a very, very long time to do because you're, um, first of all, doing many passes with the screen printing to get the relief to pick up the oil and the wax. And then it's, so I'm a painter. Um, and then just recently took up screen printing. So um, I like this process because I can paint with the, um, the relief of the print and um, use the wax, the cold wax in the paint. So I like the painterly quality that I can create. Well, thank you, Paula. And Paula is, join is joining us for a artist talk on July 31st. So please join us for that. And I love the story, Paula. Thank you. <laughs> we have Briar has joined us. Uh, do you want to talk about your piece? I think we passed you right up. Sure. In brief. Oh, there we go. It's it's the most in your face piece. <laughs> <laughs> I love this piece. Yeah, it's um, and I wish I, I wish I could remember what's behind it. There's a there's a, a line lines of text behind. They're all sort of piled on top of each other, and they're all intended to play off of one another. Um, and you really, unfortunately, in most digital or any kind of reproduction, it's pretty hard to see um, the intricacies of what's there. So you can't really read the second layer of text, which is unfortunate. But that's the way it goes. Um, it, it's a screen print. I use ultraviolet cured ink. Uh, work very photographically. So this was a um, a composite of a real chalkboard that was drawn on and scanned, and then in Photoshop, adding more layers of things and other things from uh, layers of scribbles from other chalkboards and so on, and just sort of building them up, and then starting from uh, with that in a color separation uh, process. Mostly, the prints end up being about. Uh, anywhere between 16 and 25 layers of color, oh. um, which is ironic considering it's ultimately an almost black and white image. Um, uh, but when you get up close to it, when you see it live, and they're roughly 30 to 40 inches um, in size, um, when you get up close to them, you can see all those layers of color. And that comes from a really early fascination of uh, printing technology and, and just that how much of reality we perceive through printed photographs in magazines and in po on posters and so on. Um, so I'm really interested in, in, interested in how those layers of color interact with one another. And even though I can print very, very fine details using ultraviolet ink, um, I'm still interested in seeing the pixels of, of different colors and how they interact with one another. Um, I had a professor years and years ago that said, you know, if you can make art that speaks to people from different distances, like more than 20 feet away, less than 20 feet away, and less than two feet away, you'll have their attention no matter how they come to your work. And I've always kind of, I think he said that in a rather offhanded way, but I always took it to heart. And so I try to make work that when you get in really, really close has another layer of something going on in it. Um, if that's just the intricacy of color 
um, that's that's enough. Um, and of course, the phrase "as a matter of fact" is just a, a kind of a weird wordplay, um, and but reflective of of the frustration that I feel in contemporary times, not knowing what's real, and no matter how much we're told, there's always someone going to tell you something different or something conflicting to that. And I don't think any any more than in current times. Um, and ultraviolet screen printing ink is really just. It's just screen printing ink, but it doesn't dry until it's run through a machine that hits it with about five days worth of UV light, and that's the UV light dries the ink. So as opposed to air dry inks, which tend to clog up in fine details on a screen while you're printing, um, particularly in a really dry environment. I live in a semi-arid desert here in Canada, and um, uh, it's, it's, it, we tend to, you can print uh, fine details through with regular air dry inks because they just dry out too fast and you lose all the subtlety. But UV ink, because it doesn't dry, um, allows you to print and maintain really, really fine details for as long for the entire run of, of the print. The downside of it is you need another piece of equipment like an etching press. It's, it's a big piece of equipment that you literally run the prints through and they go through and up a conveyor belt and get hit by light and come out the other side dry. I hope that made sense. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's impressive. It's impressive in person. You see it. Yeah. What, what, size, what size is this? The paper is roughly 30 by 40 inches. So the image is probably in the 23 by uh, 36 inch range. I'd like to print larger, but I, my dryer is only, only has a 25 inch bulb in it. So um, it's, uh, I'm limited to the scale of the image that I can print. Why do you need a dryer? Again, it's UV ultraviolet ink that only dries when you run it, when you bake it with UV light. I got it. And it's uh, for someone that was, uh, has always been obsessed with screen printing, um, I was always frustrated with the level of detail and, and I you know, was sort of, I think I toyed with being a lithographer for a really long time because litho could give you really fine details and screen printing just couldn't do that. But now, now using this kind of ink, it can. I mean, it's always been able to do it, but not necessarily for the run of an edition. Um, and uh, this ink is, is fantastic and it, it cleans up with water. It does what? It cleans up with water. Oh, yeah. the, the version that I yeah. use does. And yeah, but ink, what I do cleans up with water too. Yeah, and, uh, but it, again, it's just a, this, this different technology that allows you to print really fine information and not have it dry out on you. So we can print, like I'm printing through 400 mesh screens, um, which allows me to print uh, probably about a 75 micron dot, which is a pretty tiny little dot. Yeah. Okay. I need to know more about this. <laughs> Are you giving an artist talk? I, I, I haven't signed up yet. I was literally, I was, I was in the middle of the, of the wilderness up until today. So um, I, I, with no internet access, so I didn't even know this was happening. Um, um, but yes, I, I, if there's still room, I might sign up for, for a, a talk. Yeah, definitely, Briar. I'll, I'll uh, email you the schedule um, after this great. call, and then you can just let me know when you want to talk. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Thanks, very interesting. Is there anyone else on the call who didn't get a chance to talk about their work? If not, we will stop sharing and have a look at the work in the gallery. All right, Lincoln, you're up. Okay, um, let me flip the camera here. Yeah, that'll work. So, I mean, the, the gallery itself, maybe I'll just, the gallery itself is, it's a little bit of a funky room, but it, but it actually has a lot of character to it. But, um, I, I think things wind up looking pretty nice in it. So um, this one might be hard to, because it's backlit. Does that work? Yeah, that, that works well enough. So this one, I don't know if you can see it, it has a light, light in it that's come in behind the, the print. So it's by Ron Meek. Um, that work? 
So So this is Sarah Sipling, more than me six, and I didn't say this one, Gail Morrison, Conservatory of Flowers. I don't, I don't know if, if you can see the details much. Um, Jonathan Niclo, Man versus Bear. This one definitely evokes some of the weirdness of our moments. And this is deer versus the bear. Um, Nicholas Fedak, two evanescent. And Heather Hansen's, let me show you both together. And then, uh, this is Spears, one. And this one is Spears, seven. And this is Briar Craig's piece. I don't, know. I don't know if that gives you a sense of the scale of it. But, uh, so, and it does, it does have a lot of layers of color in it. That was interesting to hear. And then Ala Washak, Washak. Sorry if I mess up names. Coffee with a friend. And then these are the cyanotypes. There's one. And this one, this one has a, a sheen to it, and the image in the slideshow, I think, didn't show it so well, but, but it has a very rich back, black background to it. So, and then here's Didi Garces. Missing medicines. And again, you know, as always with pieces, when you see them in person, this, this one has all this stitching and threads that are kind of going every which way, which gives it just a lot of interest and character. Meredith Cheatwood, When It Rains. I don't know if this is seeing me. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't know if you can see that one. <laughs> Sorry. You can. Um, Michelle Saffron. And then Karen Heimer, who lives in New Mexico in Silver City. So these are small and uh, they're well, getting some reflections. But okay, oh then there's then we have the hallway, which, so. Um, this, this is Sadie Bridger's piece. Um, and here's Shrew and Mark Woods again. So, and that's, that's it, so. Um, Okay, so I'm going to send you back to Jessica. If you have any questions, if you want to see anything again, I can I can do it again. All right. Well, thanks, Lincoln. Thanks, everybody. Anyone else has anything to chime up with? Go right ahead. Otherwise, that was the plan for the day. Oh, Sadie, you're muted. Thanks. I wanted to ask Brian a question. Briar? Anyway, uh, the question I want to ask him is how many different sayings are embedded in that piece? Because you can, you can um, view, you can see one fairly well, but there are other ones behind. There looks like there's several expressions. And I was just wondering if you could talk about how you chose the language and the text in your piece? The, I think there are three, there are but three. I could be wrong. Um, I, I make a lot of prints that look sort of like that, so I can't, they, they all sort of blend together after a little while. Um, typically the, the top layer of text, the one that's most noticeable, in this case, a smatter of fact, 
um, sets the tone. And then I might throw a, a phrase or a, a saying or a quote in behind it that either complements it in a, in a um, by amplifying it in some way or contradicts it and to try to create some sort of dialogue and, and um, room for people to interpret. Thank so you. in this in that particular case, I just don't remember how, what the other phrase was if, or phrases were. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you everybody. And if there's anyone else here who would like to give an artist talk who is not on our schedule, let us know and be happy to, to um, put you on schedule. And, and uh, if you're ever in New Mexico, any one of you, you're totally welcome to come by. We'd love to meet you. And with that, I think we're done. All right. Good night, Thank everyone. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. That was so cool to hear your stuff. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Bye.